Hi everybody, this is Lisa and it's time for another Verbling class. Um, in this hour we are going to have an English reading class and if you looked at the topic above it's about uh, Saudi Arabian women who had a protest today called a drive-in and they did this to protest the law in Saudi Arabia that doesn't allow them to drive a car. So I just found this on the National Public Radio here in the United States. NPR.org is a website uh, that offers news and all kinds of other programming. And so I found that article and you can click on the link uh, to the right, to my right, in the verb link chat and that'll open up the Google document where I put the article. And then as um, soon as we have some more students show up, we will put it in the screen share and then we can read it together and discuss. Hi, Raphael. How are you? Hi, Lisa. Great. Thank you. What about you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> what's the weather like in Brazil today? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a nice weather here in the yeah. Sky is there's no clouds in the sky. There is a it's a good weather today. Mhm. Mm I have a student in uh, Brazil that I spoke to him. It was the morning time for me, but it was uh, about the afternoon for him, and it was already <clears throat> 81 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is about 27 degrees Celsius, and it was clear blue skies and really nice weather in Sao Paulo. So. Well, yeah. these days, this hay, this days will be hot in here. It's so hot, uh, yeah. almost 40 degrees um, wow. yesterday and the day after. Yes, it was a uh, tough, you know. And it's in spring, and it's spring already. So when yeah. it gets summer, it maybe it could be worse. Wow! Right. Now, yes. Are you in uh, Rio? Is that where you are? Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm in Rio. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we. I was talking to him today about Rio. He has a sister who lives in Rio. Uh, and we were talking about the, you know, the favelas and, and different things he was explaining to me. So it's interesting. Yes. yes. Great. Well, welcome to class again. And hi, Aisha. Welcome to you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. So did you guys, oh, look, lots of people opened up the article already, but only two have joined us in class. So um, we can just uh, get started. Aisha, uh, I was talking to Rafael, and he says in Brazil it's um, pretty warm and getting hotter, so maybe we should head down to Brazil because it's getting cold where I live, <laughs> and I know it's getting cold where you live. <laughs> let's go, let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> I can give verbling classes from Brazil, <laughs> <laughs> and I could be near the beach. Yes, uh, that's why you see me wearing my jacket here because uh, I was outside all day at soccer games for my kids and it got um, the clouds came in and it was you know it's chilly so I'm still a little chilly oh. and Yuki how are you doing? Hello. Hi. Uh, fine thank you. We we're just talking a little bit before class starts. Yuki? Um, is yes. it getting getting pretty cold in Moscow? You wearing your coats and hats and things already? Uh, it's getting colder, colder now. But yeah. but uh, uh, fortunately, it 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 isn't uh, snow. No uh, it, snow. It, it, no, it, it doesn't snow. It yeah. doesn't snow. In Moscow, um, I think of Moscow as a very cold place with lots of snow. When does it usually start to snow? Will it snow in November or December? Uh, usually, uh, in the beginning of November, uh, um, it 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 snows. It okay. snows. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, and uh, and long winter continues. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dark until, long winter. <laughs> until May. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. All right. Well, you can um, have some fun on Verbling in those long, dark nights <laughs> of winter. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, um, I was looking around for something interesting to read today for the class, and I found this article on the NPR uh, website, 
which I thought was um, pretty interesting. I just think I I didn't provide the link uh, in this uh, at the end, but it's it's the link to the actual website is provided on the Verbling website underneath the video. So if you want to go to the actual website, but um, interestingly, um, I I didn't know this. I guess um, in Saudi Arabia, I guess women are not allowed to drive. Uh, um, I I saw yeah. this news today in CNN. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, cool. Yeah, I haven't watched any news reports, so maybe they have been reporting on it um, on the TV. But I saw yes, this yes. on the website, and um, I thought it was rather interesting. Um, and we could practice reading it, and then I think we'll have enough time to talk about it um, and uh, whether or not how we would like it if we couldn't drive. That would be... a very different for me because in the United States uh, you have to drive a lot usually if you unless you live in a big city like New York where you can live with and you know you don't need a car you can walk everywhere or take the subway in most places in the United States it's very um, uh, necessary to have a car and to know how to drive and to be able to drive and I, I don't even think guys would want to drive women around here. <laughs> I think that they, they just everybody wants to have their own car and do their own driving. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So okay, let's see, read about what's happening uh, in Saudi Arabia. All right. So you guys know how this works. I'll read the a little bit at a time, and then we'll take turns reading and talk about the vocabulary. Saudi women get behind wheel for drive-in protest. All right, so usually in the United States, uh, in English, we would think of drive-in um, with the words um, drive-in movie. So I don't know if you guys know what that is, where people drive their cars to like a big parking lot type area, and there's a big, huge screen. Um, those were very popular uh, maybe 50, 50 years ago now. There are still some left around the country, but not very many but that was popular so that was kind of what what we would think of as a drive-in but here of course they're talk actually talking about a drive-in um, in the 1960s when there were a lot of protests there used to be sit-ins where students would go to um, buildings at the university and they would sit down and they wouldn't move and that's called a sit-in but in this case it's a drive-in because the women are actually protesting um, against a law that doesn't allow them to drive. So they're driving, doing the thing they are not supposed to be doing. Okay, let's see. Did somebody join us? Oh, yes. Hi. Hi, Nian. Hui in. Okay. Good. Just. Hello. Hi there. We're just getting started. Hui in. Okay, so women in Saudi Arabia are braving a ban on their ability to drive, taking to the streets Saturday as part of a push to allow women to attain driver's licenses. Thousands of people have signed an online petition supporting the protest, which government and religious officials have spoken out against. Okay, I'm going to start with Yuki this time. I always begin with Aisha. <laughs> Yuki, why don't you start today? We'll give uh, Aisha uh, a break. From me? From yes. Me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Woman, <clears throat> uh, woman in Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabia. Hmm? Woman in, in Saudi Arabia are braving a ban on the ability to drive, taking taking to the street Saturday as part of a uh, part of a push to allow women to attain driver driver's licenses. Thousands of people have signed an online petition sub, petition supporting the protest, which government and religious officials have spoken spoken out against. Mm -hmm. So the women are braving a ban. So those are two, that kind of goes together as a phrase. They're braving a ban. To brave something means you're going to do it even if it's dangerous. Um, sometimes we use the word uh, brave like we're going to brave the weather. So it means we're going to get in our cars and drive somewhere. Maybe we're, we want to go to a show or something. Even if it's supposed to be snowing or raining heavily, we're going to brave it. It means we're going to... Challenging. Yeah, we're going to just do it anyways, even though it might be a little bit dangerous. 
So that's what they're going to be. Be brave. You know, when you are brave, that means you do something even if you're a little bit afraid or if it's something scary or dangerous even. And the ban is um, what is in place right now. So when you ban something, you you um, you make it against the law so that people are not allowed to do it. So there is a ban right now for women. They cannot drive. So they're braving a ban. They're going against the ban. They're going to do it in anyways. Um, so they're taking to the streets. So this phrasal verb here, to take to something, to take to the streets, that's actually a expression that we use, that whole thing. Is ju it just means to go out in the streets, to go to the streets. Um, we, we use this uh, kind of phrase a lot when there are protests or strikes, like we talked about in yesterday's classes, when people take to the streets. It just means they go there. They go in the streets or out on the streets. And they're doing that because they want to attain um, a driver's license. They want to be able to have. So to, to attain means to be able to get, to be able to have. Um, and there are many people in the country that are have signed a petition. So that's you guys probably know what a petition is when there's a protest and especially um, these days it's very easy to pass around a petition online maybe you get a link to a website and then you put your name saying that you support what is happening so there's lots of people out there supporting these women but the government and some re religious officials have spoken out so that's another phrasal verb there to speak out and we usually um, to speak out just means you you t give your voice, but this word here against makes it um, that you know that they're not in favor of it. <laughs> so if you were speaking out for something or for somebody, you would be supporting them. But if you're speaking out against them, you're saying you do not like what they're doing. NPR, so that uh, stands for National Public Radio. NPR's Deborah Amos filed this report from Riyadh for our newscast unit. The drive to end Saudi Arabia's unique ban kicked off early on Saturday when the first video was posted online of a woman driving in the capital. <clears throat> okay, Rafael. NPR's Deborah Amos filed this report from Riyadh from our newscast unit. The drive to end Saudi Arabia's unique ban kicked off early on Saturday when the first video was posted online of a woman driving in the capital. Mm -hmm. um, just a little correction right here. This word is filed, so we have that long I sound. Uh, filed. Exactly. Uh, filed. Um, this is news speak, so reporters, when they make a report, they file it. So. Um, you'll hear that a lot if you're watching the news or listening to the news. Um, so and so will file this report or filed this report. So that just means that she created this report. She went there and she talked to people, and then this is what she found out and what she wrote about it. So unique here just means um, Sorry, what, what the what the yes. NPR means. Oh, this stands for National uh. Public Radio. So in the United States. Um, all across the United States, we this is a, a radio station, and it's supported by listeners, and also um, they get donations from various businesses and things. So non-commercial. Non it's, it's a non-commercial radio station. Okay. Yes, exactly. National Public Radio, and everybody just says NPR. NPR. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. So here, um, it's unique. Um, other countries around the world do not have this same law against women driving, so it's special. Um, and the ban kicked off, so that's another phrasal verb, lots of phrasal verbs in this uh, article. To kick off something just means to start it, so to begin. So they began uh, their protest early this morning. Uh, I'm in Washington State, so that was a while ago now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and they posted this video online. So yeah, there's some videos of women driving around the Capitol, which I guess is very unusual and of course they're saying um, is illegal. Activists have been officially warned of arrest and possible legal action. Some high profile organizers got personal calls from the Ministry of Interior advising them to stay off the road. 
they were also shadowed by undercover cops in what appeared to be an intimidation campaign. Okay. Julian? Oh, okay. Activists have been officially warned of arrest and possible legal action. Some high profile organizers got personal calls from the Ministry of Interior advising them to stay off the road. They were also shadowed by undercover cops in what appeared to be an intimidation campaign. Mm -hmm. Good. So they had been, or they have been, um, officially warned. So when somebody warns you about something, they're telling you, you better not do this. If you do this, something is going to happen. And in this case, they told the protesters, the ladies, the women, that if you do this, um, we might arrest you and we might take legal action against you. So that means they might even bring them, I don't know what that looks like in Saudi Arabia. Here in the United States, a legal action means you might have to go to court. You may even go to jail if you're found guilty. Uh, I don't know what legal action in Saudi Arabia looks like. Um, high profile, whenever you use that uh, phrase there, it's, you use a hyphen together. High profile describes um, the type of organizers, the, the people who are in charge, the leaders. So you can talk about high profile politicians, high profile athletes. They're the ones that get the most attention. They're the, usually the leaders of the group. So they got personal phone calls um, from some uh, government officials advising them, basically warning them, probably telling them uh, they better stay off the road. So to stay off obviously means not to be there. They don't want them driving. They were also shadowed. So when somebody, the verb to shadow somebody just means they'll follow you. So women, uh, these organizers uh, were being followed or shadowed by undercover cops. So undercover cops are the kind that do not wear uniforms. They just look like regular people, but they are cops, and they usually carry guns and things like that. So they're undercover, though. And intimidation. So that comes from the verb uh, to intimidate. If you try to intimidate somebody, then you try to scare them. You try to scare them so that they won't do something that you don't want them to do. So they're trying to intimidate these uh, women from protesting. They don't want them to do it. So this describes the noun here, an intimidation campaign. So that's what they're trying to do. However, the warnings have been mostly ignored. Support to lift the ban has come from surprising quarters, including male commentators in Saudi's mainstream media. The drive-in is the third broad protest against the driving ban since the early 1990s and it's being discussed energetically on Twitter where the hashtags Saudi Oct, Oct for short for October 26 driving and women to drive are providing running commentary. Okay, Aisha, how about you read all of that? Yeah, however, the warnings have been mostly ignored. Support to lift the ban has come from surprising quarters, including male commentators in Saudi's mainstream media. The drive-in is the third broad protest against the drive-in ban since the early 1990s, and it's been discussed energet energetically on Twitter, where the hashtag Saudi Oct26 driving and women to drive are providing running commentary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically they have mostly been ignored, so they're not listening to them. They're just saying, okay, whatever, we're going to do what we want to do. <laughs> and so they want to lift the ban. When you lift something, of course, you're picking it up. Usually you might. This verb has a lot of different meanings. If you're lifting up a baby, you're picking up a baby. If you're lifting up uh, the lid of something, like a garbage can, you're looking inside maybe. But to lift a ban uh, means to stop it so that it no longer is a ban um, anymore. So they want it to be legal for women to drive. So to lift the ban means it will be 
legal. Um, the quarters they're talking about here, of course, a lot, another word that has many meanings. Quarters is one of our monies. That means 25 cents in the United States. But also, um, this just means from the surprising areas, like groups of people. So that includes these commentators that are male. So these guys who talk about things on maybe the news or the, um, some kind of mainstream media. So commentators could be uh, sports commentators that tell you the play-by-play -play of the soccer game or something, um, political commentators who talk about the politics, uh, legal commentators who talk about what's going on with the courts and in the laws, and me mainstream just means that it's what you see if you turn on the TV. It's not alternative, it's just what's available on the TV. So even mainstream guys are supporting uh, this uh, this protest and supporting the lifting of the band. So again, the drive-in rather than a sit-in because they're driving. And this word broad just means um, big or wide or huge. It's very um, in many different areas. So it's a broad Sorry, one, protest. Sorry, one more. Yes. Uh, repeat again uh, the meaning of driving. Yes. So I'm um, I'm contrasting it to in the. Maybe if you remember the history in the United States of the hippies and all the protests against the Vietnam War um, in the 1960s, the, they protested by having what they call sit-ins, where the students would sit down and not move. But now this is a play on words for that. So this is called, they're calling it a drive-in, and it's mm -hmm. describing the women driving. So that's the protest. It's the a drive-in. Oh. Yeah, that's the okay. protest. So the drive-in, which is the protest, is the third of its kind. So they've had some of these before, um, since the 1990s. Um, and it's being discussed in here energetically. Whenever you come across a word that's pretty long, you did a good job, Aisha, just kind of break it down into smaller units and just say it a little bit at a time. So it's energetically. And the tikali, we don't usually really say it like that, even though uh, it looks like tikali. It's, I move these around, energetically. So you did a good job. Um, so yeah, so the hashtags. And what this means is on Twitter, like Aisha told us, you like Twitter, uh, it's a running commentary. So people can um, um, comment and make uh, comments and talk about what's happening in real time. And so a running commentary is like, a little bit at a time, so that like first thing in the morning, then an hour later, and then two hours. It's it continues on and on and on throughout the protest. People were continuing to talk about it on Twitter, on Twitter, um, updating their status probably or their whatever you call it on Twitter. <laughs> what do you call it on Twitter, Asia? Oh. Your stat. You're not really updating your status. You're just. Uh, Tweeting, yeah, I guess, yeah. You, yeah, you mean maybe profile or something like yeah, that. Yeah, just tweeting, I guess, the tweets. Yeah. And right. the hashtag helps you see all the tweets about the, the subject. Right, so it's a way of organizing. Uh, exactly. Yeah, a way of organizing uh, the commentary so that if you, if you search that, so if you searched that on Twitter, you'd be able to find what people are saying, right? What? Yeah, okay. So as of Saturday morning in the U.S., we are not seeing any reports of broad arrests related to the protest. Police had reportedly intended to use the threat of traffic tickets, not arrests, to dissuade most women from driving. A video posted to the October 26 driving YouTube account Saturday shows a woman driving while wearing a niqab, a veil that leaves only the eyes uncovered. Talking with her passengers. Okay, I'm gonna. Okay, we'll note that even in the excitement of the moment, the driver smoothly flicks on her turn signal to change lanes and make a right turn. <laughs> I watched that video. Okay, uh, Yuki, that's a lot. That's a lot to read there. Go for it. Um, as, as of Saturday morning. We are we are not seeing any report of of broad broad arrests related to the protest. Police had police had reportedly intended to use use the threat of traffic ticket tickets, not not arrests, to 
this assured most women from dri driving a video posted to the to the October 26th driving YouTube account Saturday show the woman driving driving while wearing a niqab niqab a veil a veil that leaves only the eyes uncovered talk talking with her pass passengers will note that even in in the in the excitement of of the moment that driver smoothly freaking flicks on her turn she signal to change lanes and make the right turn mm -hmm. so basically we haven't really heard any reports of anything happening um, the police had reportedly so whenever a person says um, somebody had reportedly it just means that's what um, they said they were going to do they reportedly said you know so it just means like police had said they intended so they um, to intend to do something is to that's what your intention is it's what you say you're going to do um, and so they said they were going to use uh, the threat of. So when you threaten somebody, you tell them, if you're going to do this, I'm going to give you a ticket. But you may or may not actually do it. And it t turns out that it doesn't sound like they did, but I don't know for sure the result. Um, and this way, uh, word here is a little bit hard to uh, know how to pronounce it. It's dissuade. So this actually kind of has like a W sound. Uh, sounds like you would say wade, like that. Dissuade. Um, and that means when you try to dissuade somebody, it means you try to um, discourage them from doing something. You try to, to um, get it so they don't do the thing. So you might want to, for example, dissuade your teenager from drinking alcohol. You, want, you try to talk them out of it. Or you dissuade your daughter from marrying this boyfriend that you don't like. <laughs> you know, something like that. So they're trying to get the women to not do that. And uh, niqab, that's just the the. Uh, sorry, uh, yes. what uh, what traffic tickets mean? Okay, mean so in, a tra in this sentence. Yeah, in this sentence, they a traffic ticket is a ticket that you get. It's like a fine. So if the cop pulls you over while you're driving, he's going to give you a ticket, and then you're going to have to pay money. So, for example, in the United States, the most common traffic tickets are either parking tickets like if you parked somewhere for longer than you are allowed um, or if you parked in a place where you're not supposed to park you'll get a ticket and have to pay a fine or of course a speeding ticket and so if you are going faster than you're supposed to you might get a speeding ticket but here this traffic ticket would have been um, a ticket that they would give to the women because it's against the law to drive for them, so it means they would have to pay money. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. So the niqab is just the veil. Um, if you click on this link right here, it'll take you to the YouTube video. You can watch it if you want. It's it's uh, like 40 seconds long or something like that, and it just shows the lady with the niqab is the the black veil that covers. I don't know if it has to be black, but um, it covers your whole face, not just um, part of the face, and so it's. Where you just are, uh, the women can see out uh, where their eyes are only. Um, so yeah, so it, she and then this is just describing. If you if you watch the video, you'll understand what they're saying here, um, because it shows a lady and she is um, chatting or talking to her somebody in the car. And even though she's excited and she's talking, she's able to drive smoothly, so she's not having any problems. Um, she's and she just flicks on that means turns on her turn signal so when you're going to turn you have to turn on your signal to let people know that you're turning and to flick on something means to turn on so you can also in your house you can flick on the lights you can flick off the lights. so it just means to turn on or to turn off uh, today's protest also inspired a song no woman no drive the lib <laughs> the liberal re rewrite of the Bob Marley hit was posted to YouTube Saturday by musician Allah Wardi and comedians Hisham Fagi and Fahad Al Butari. Uh, yeah, as we reported last month, a Saudi cleric 
who had hoped to discourage female drivers, said that sitting behind the wheel of a car could harm a woman's ovaries. <laughs> His comments met with derision and inspired some of the lyrics to the No Woman, No Drive parody song. Okay, Raphael. Uh, uh, where, where, does, where did you start? I... Right there with today's protest. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Today's protest also inspired a song, No Woman, No Drive. The liberal hit right of the Bob Marley hit was posted to YouTube Saturday by musician Ala Wardi and comedians Hisham Fagi and Farad Abu Tari. As we reported last month, a Saudi cleric who has hoped to discourage female drivers say that sitting behind the wheel of a car could harm a woman's ovaries. These comments met with derision and inspired some of the lyrics of the No Woman, No Drive parody song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Crazy. <laughs> kind of crazy, huh? <laughs> okay, so again, if you click on this link, you you can watch this uh, video. It's kind of funny. I watched it. They're singing. I don't know if you know the song, but um, "No Woman, No Cry" is the name of the real song that Bob Marley, who is from uh, Jamaica, he uh, wrote that song. And this was a rewrite of it. So it's when you write something over, uh, but you do it a little differently. In this case, it was. Uh, kind of a funny song, it's a comedy. Um, so yeah, so these guys posted it up and then also just giving more information, this cleric, so that's a member of uh, like the religious, like a religious official, uh, he wanted to discourage, so he, he wanted, you know, to try to get them to not want to drive and they try, he tried to tell them that it was going to hurt their ovaries, so that's their reproductive organs, you know, maybe they, he tried to say, if you drive, you won't be able to have babies, you know, or something like that. Um, and of course, his, he, uh, his comments, so the, the words that he said were met with, so that's actually a phrasal verb too, to, meet, to be met with derision. So that's kind of like ridicule. They made fun of him. So uh, it was kind of ridiculous. And, um, and so anyways, this song is a parody song. So I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Weird Al Yankovic. He's an American guy who makes funny songs, and they're all parodies. So he, he takes, like, Michael Jackson songs, Madonna songs, and really popular songs, and then he makes new lyrics, and they're really funny, and he makes videos and stuff, too. So um, if you want to know what a parody is, that's a good example. It's just when you make fun of something using another song that was already written. Um, organizers tell the Associated Press that at least 60 women took part in Saturday's protest. More than 20 women posted videos of themselves driving in Saudi Arabia today. The AP spoke to Mai Al Sayan, Sayan, who says she was one of them. I'm very happy and proud that there was no reaction against me, so Sayan tells the AP in a phone interview. There were some cars that drove by. They were surprised, but it was just a glance. It is fine. They are not used to seeing women driving here. <laughs> okay. Uyen? Oh, okay. Organizers tell the Associated Press, AP, that at least 60 women took part in Saturday's protest. More than 20 women posted videos of themselves driving in Saudi Arabia today. The AP spoke to May Al Sayan, who says she was one of them. I am very happy and proud that there was a reaction against me. Sayan so tells the AP in the phone interview. In a phone interview, there were some cars that drove by. They were surprised, but it was just a glance. It is fine. Uh, they are not used to seeing women driving here. Yeah. So she was one of them. She was the protesters, and she's glad. She's happy that there was no reaction. So nobody did anything. She did not get arrested. Uh, doesn't sound like anybody was mad or angry. Um, she says that some cars drove by. So that's another phrasal verb. To drive by just means they, you know, you're in your car and they come alongside you and they just drive on by. They keep going. They don't stop. Um, they just maybe had a little glance. So a glance is like when you turn your head 
to look at something or somebody, but you don't pay very much attention and it's a very short time that you look. So you kind of just look at over, turn your head a little bit, and then you turn your head back and um, you know do what you're doing driving. So she just says they are not used to it. So they're not used to seeing women drive. When you're not used to something, it means it's new for you. So you know somebody might look and go, whoa, what's going on over there? But they didn't care. You know, maybe they probably knew knew about it. Um, Sayan tells the news agency that she has a driver's license. It's just not a Saudi one. As Deborah Amos has reported, Saudi Arabia is the only country that doesn't allow driver's licenses to be issued to women. Asked about today's protest, Sayan says she didn't go far. I just took a small loop. I didn't drive for a long way, but it was fine. I went to the grocery store, she tells the AP. Okay, Aisha. Sayan tells the news agency that she has a driver license. It's just not a Saudi one. As Deborah Amos has reported, Saudi Arabia is the only country that doesn't allow driver's licenses to be issued to women. Asked about today's protest drive, Sayan says, she didn't go far. I just took a small loop. I didn't drive for a long way, but it was fine. I went to the grocery store. She tells the AP. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the only country that doesn't give women um, driver's licenses, it doesn't allow them to be issued to. When you issue somebody something, you give it to them, usually in like an official document or something. Um, and she didn't go far. She took a small loop. A loop is just like a circle. So she just went to the grocery store, turned around, and came back to her house. So she said it was it was fine. It wasn't very far. And hi there, Dennis. Um, the agency says Sayan's husband and family waited at home and called her nervously when she arrived at the grocery store to check on her. In a recent report on the female driver's movement in Saudi Arabia, Deborah Amos rode along with Aziza al Yosef on a trip around Riyadh with her male driver relegated to the back seat. Al Yusef is a main organizer of the event. Dennis, would you like to read that part? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone, by the way. I don't know. Hi, welcome. Because the chat doesn't work. Hello. My messages. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so I'm sorry, from in a recent from report? From the agency. Ah, uh, the yes. agency. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. The agency says Seven's husband and family waited at home and called her nervously when she arrived at the grocery store to check on her. In a recent report on the female driver's movement in Saudi Arabia, Deborah Amos rode along with Aziza Al Yousaf on a trip around Riyadh with her male driver relegated to the back seat. Al Yousaf is a main organizer of the event. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah, so this is one of the organizers. So, maybe she's one of the high profile organizers that they talked about in, um, up above in the article. And one word here that you guys might not be familiar with is relegated to. So, if you are relegated to something, it means that's where you have been put. <laughs> so, he was her male driver. So, remember, this is a woman here, and she's not usually supposed to drive. So, she has a driver who is a male, but he was put in the back seat. He wasn't allowed to drive. <laughs> she was doing the driver. So he was relegated to. So he was made to go to the back seat. Um, we are saying, just go ahead and drive now, she says. I know women started driving. The messages are in the hundreds. We are counting the videotapes. In the weeks leading up to today's event, a website created by the protests organizers was blocked in Saudi Arabia. And on Friday, the site was hacked. Okay, Yuki, this last little bit here. Yes. Uh, okay. We are saying, just go ahead and drive now. She said, I, I know women start, start to driving. The, message, the messages are in, in the hundreds. We are counting the videotapes. In the in the weeks leading up leading up to 
to today's event, a website created by the protest organizers were blocked in Saudi, Saudi Arabia. And, and on Friday, the site was hacked. Yeah. So sh basically, the, the, like we've been reading about, the protest is just to get women to drive. That's why they called it a drive-in. Um, and that's what women were doing. And I guess part of the protest was also to take a video of yourself driving and post it to YouTube, which people have been doing, and also um, tweeting on Twitter. And so she says they um, have been counting them up. And so maybe by tomorrow or the next day, they'll know how many people actually participated and if anything changes because of it. Um, the only couple words here would be maybe like leading up to. So whenever you talk about something is leading up to um, another time, that's the, the time period right before the event. Usually you're talking about leading up to the show or to the event or to the launch, or something like that. Um, and it was blocked, so the government didn't allow the website to go up. And then it also got hacked. So somebody got into the website and doesn't really say what they did, but it, it got hacked. So it wasn't really um, being able to be seen. So that might also affect uh, how many people actually heard about the protest and participated in it. Okay, so uh, Dennis, I don't know how much you were able to read before you came on, but it's basically the idea that women are protesting that in Saudi Arabia they are not allowed to drive. And so, of course, uh, they would like to drive, and they do know how to drive, some of them. So that's what uh, this protest was about. So, Aisha, you wrote up in the, <laughs> the chat earlier that this is a ridiculous law. Of course, we learned by reading this article that it's the only country in the whole world that has this law. So it's, um, it's kind of amazing that they are still able to get away with it, we could say, <laughs> in the face of all the women around the world who um, would probably, you know, not like it. What do you think, Asia? <laughs> and I was looking at the video. Yeah. And one co in the comments, someone say, "Women can drive anyway." <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a funny law. I think we are in 2030, and uh, in one country, women can drive. Yeah. For what? It's not. Why they think a woman should not drive? I think it's my question. Like I don't understand. What, <laughs> like, what is the reasoning? Why? Yeah. Yeah. Why do you feel like if women drive, something will happen? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't know. I, you know, I'm think thinking it's, a it's custom. Like in their mind, women should be taken care of by their husband. So uh -huh. you just sit there and you wait. Like they really get to sit and wait. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I mean, and that's, I mean, this obviously brings up the the larger topic of um, change and yeah. um, how does change happen in a culture. So of course, many peoples around the world have ha um, had change in their cultures one way or another, and sometimes it's just a natural change that seems like a good idea, and sometimes you have to fight hard to get. Uh, change and so it sounds like in Saudi Arabia right now the women are finally yeah it seems like why didn't they do it in 1980 or you know 1990 or <laughs> 2000 even but um, yeah they're just they're starting to protest more but of course it said 60 now I don't know what the population of Riyadh is but that's not very many you know <laughs> yeah, but it's good because they are not the first one it right. uh, uh, it was a one yeah I think last year or something like that one yes. woman tried uh -huh. and she was alone and the, 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 she had the uh, problem because she was uh, taken to jail and everything but uh, uh -huh. it's good like she was the first one now it's like what, what three four yeah it's gonna change one day <laughs> yeah yeah well it, it's interesting uh, it would be interesting, uh, you know, if we had somebody from Saudi Arabia here. I, I, I just wonder who, what kind of people would keep uh, keep the law going. You know, I, I can't imagine like necessarily young men, 
but maybe older. I don't, I don't know because other um, countries have the same religion and they're not banning women, so it doesn't seem like it could be just a religious reason, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. First, right. first of all, all yeah, I you, I didn't know the fact that that uh, it is banned uh, that woman woman drives in Saudi Saudi Arabia. Yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> uh, recently, I I have been in Dubai. Uh, then I saw that woman's driver. Yeah. Uh, although it it is not 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 so many, but I saw the woman's driver. But so I I'm very I I I feel very strange. Mm -hmm. Why only in Saudi Arabia uh, ban yeah. ban the woman's dri driving? But but it is not many. Maybe it is not so strange. Uh, if uh, if you th think seriously, uh, even in Japan, yeah. now 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 uh, it is it is completely common among among uh, among women to drive a car. But yeah. but uh, before um, Pacific War, maybe seventy years ago, uh, women. Woman was recommended to conduct uh, uh, mo modest. Oh, to be modest, yeah. Uh -huh. To be modest uh -huh. uh, 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 and follow follow the follow the men. <laughs> uh, and, yes. and I think uh, I think rarely uh, woman woman drive the uh, drive the car. Yeah. So, um, so may maybe um, so so I think uh, maybe uh, uh, in many countries, uh, woman be woman uh, woman uh, be beca became driving became became drive uh, only recently maybe <laughs> only uh -huh. uh, sure. only recent to fifty maybe hundred years maybe less than 100 years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it seems like I just uh, looked on Wikipedia and it says specifically to the Saudi Arabian culture, they have a, a history of having um, this law that says that all females must have a male guardian, which is typically your father, your brother, or a husband, and that the, this guardian, this male, has duties and rights over the woman. Um, some of which are like it says here, depending on the guardian, women may need their guardian's permission for marriage and divorce, travel, if under 45, education, employment, opening a bank account, elective surgery, particularly when sexual in nature. Uh, the official law, if not the custom, requiring a guardian's permission for a woman to seek employment was repealed in 2008. So yeah, it's definitely some kind of a uh, uh, tradition, cultural tradition that, you know, in many, many countries it would no longer be uh, acceptable to have such a such a law, but in this country it's still um, still happening. So yeah, Hu Yen, what, how would you feel if you had to have a male tell, um, get permission from a man to do all those types of things. <laughs> oh, it would be sad. Yeah. <laughs> Some not really used to it. I was brought up in a culture that mm -hmm. women can do many things. Yeah, women can sure. work equally to men. So yeah, it would be a restrict. Right. Yeah. What about? Uh, I mean, I, you know, certainly in the history of the world, me, women have. Uh, had to, you know, fight, I guess, and ask for and demand things that um, weren't allowed to them, like voting and, you know, driving and getting jobs and certain types of jobs, especially those kinds of things. Um, but these days, in most countries, it does seem that uh, women have a lot of rights and it's kind of a normal thing. So like Huyen says, you've, you have grown up in a society where it, that's normal. For you to be able to do the things you want to do without 
a man, you know, getting permission from a man or, or something like that. Um, Rafael, what do you think about uh, Brazilian women? Do, do you think they would uh, like to have to talk to a man first before they can do anything? <laughs> no, no. Um, luckily, we don't have this problem here. We, ha we have a we live in a liberal society here, and mm -hmm. everything, everyone could do everything wants. You know. at, yeah. at least, at you know, at least uh, here we don't we have this kind of problem. We have lots of problems here, but uh, now luckily we don't have this kind of problem. We men and women are treated in equality. Mhm. Mm mhm. Yeah. Dennis, do you have any? Uh comments on what you think about this law and whether or not it's uh, something that seems out of date these days? Uh, for, for you or for me maybe, but if I would be in Europe and if I would live in Saudi Arabia, I don't know, maybe I had another opinion on it. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't know, it's what is called globalization and uh, sometimes it's good sometimes it's not I don't know why I have no reason why all cultures and people must be must have something and, and mm, must have been similar I don't know they yeah. live their lives so that's not a tradition I don't know yeah maybe it's bad Maybe if I were a woman in Saudi Arabia, it would be extremely bad. I don't know. That's um, about driving. I I don't think uh, that is so so important. And to speak about getting a job in Saudi Saudi Arabia, I think that's not so uh, so crucial as in. Western countries because they get money from from uh, oil mm -hmm. and don't pay taxes. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I think this is uh, one of the things that um, is always difficult to look on at another culture and another group of people and try to decide what they should or shouldn't be doing. And sometimes it's okay to say like, "Well, that's their culture." And then at what point do you say, well, no, <laughs> you know, these are the human rights maybe or every every woman should be allowed, you know, something like that. And it is interesting that um, this, this article didn't really talk about that. Like sometimes when... Um, you know, when people are protesting something in a, in one country, they oftentimes talk about if they have international support for their protest, for example. I'm just wondering, for example, if other uh, countries in, like, say, in the Middle East um, are supportive of women. I would imagine they were, but this article didn't really tell us anything about that. It just talked about what's happening in Saudi Arabia and that there are women that are organizing um, and it didn't really say whether or not um, you know women other Arabic women support this um, protest or or something like that you know a lot of times uh, movements try to get broader support they try to um, you know get allies we could say yeah so I don't know is there anything Dennis in Russia that like women specifically women can't do still that they are upset about? Is there anything you know of? that? I mean in the United States definitely um, just I think last year women g were allowed to be in combat which is something that they were not allowed to do before yeah. and I think I even talked about that in a verbling class but earlier that is, this year. I, I heard I, 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 I saw the news that uh, there is uh, there is severe discrimination uh, uh, towards women in in the uh, American army. Yeah, there is no, there is not a discrimination. There is a, just a common sense. It's I uh, don't know. Maybe I maybe I'm just I'm. Uh, yeah, Yuki. That yeah, that happens. 
Recently, some uh, woman soldier confessed that they, uh, she had uh, received for a long time in uh, sexual harassment yeah. in the army. So it, yeah. it was a scandal. Yeah, it, sure. It became a scandal. Yes, that, that happens frequently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just trying to think of something that was recent, and that was the most recent thing that I can remember is that women wanted, you know, like, I, I don't want to be in the army even, so I don't want to be in combat for sure, but I guess some women do. <laughs> and so um, they that's something that they were not allowed to do, and then they pushed to have it changed, and then they got it changed. I'm just wondering around the world if there are still countries that have different laws that restrict women for whatever reasons from doing things that they they actually want to be doing um, I don't know I, I, I don't know anybody can answer Rafael if there's something in Brazil or Huyen if do you know of anything in Vietnam where women want to do something but they actually can't for some reason I don't know <laughs> do you know of anything Huyen? As far as I'm concerned, no. Yeah, no. You can do anything. Yeah, pretty much. Abortion? Well, that's true. Abortion um, in some countries is not legal. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's a good. <laughs> that's a big one. <laughs> 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 you say anything, so. Well, yeah, that's a that's a very big one in in, in a lot of countries. But you know, men cannot get pregnant, so. <laughs> they can't have abortions either. <laughs> no, 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 they can have abortion. <laughs> I know, I was joking. Hey, um, yes. What were you saying, Asia? I said I wish that they could. <laughs> what? I wish they could have. Oh, you wish they could have. <laughs> that would be a completely yeah, different a world, huh? That would be a different world. A anybody, any of the males in the class wish they could have babies? Yuki? Do you wish you could have a baby? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> or do you want to leave it up to the women? <laughs> um, maybe if I if I have a woman, maybe I. Sure. Yeah. I, I wish I would. <laughs> <laughs> what about wish, you, Raphael? Baby. No, definitely not. I, it's a very hard hard thing to 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 do. I absolutely not. Let this with women. That is with, with you, William. Yes, you guys have it easy. You guys don't even get headaches or anything sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Dennis? Are you happy to be a man and let the baby making, uh, or not the making, but the baby having <laughs> to women? <laughs> no, 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 definitely. So you see, we are not equal. We are no. not equal, even by nature. Sure. I should be equal by law, so mm -hmm. there should be some difference. It's it's even interesting. That's yeah. much more interesting. It, I think it's an interesting thing. It's just whether or not who decides. You know, like do do women decide what women can or can't do, or want or not want to do, or do men decide for them what they can or can't do? You know, I think that's for women. Being a woman, you know, that's what I would say. And the same thing if I was a man. I would, you know, I wouldn't want women to make choices for me because they don't know my body and what, you know, my things. So. Yeah, you see direction. Yeah. I think that's why we should do whatever we want because <laughs> we're so free. <laughs> yeah. What do you it think? Is again? A, it is quite natural to uh, yeah. woman, a man, woman, a man, uh, play a uh, play a own role. Yeah. In society. But ba banning driving is is uh, is uh, go too far, I yeah. think. Yes. Yeah. Well, and what what was crazy in the article was like some guy. Does he really believe that it's going to mess up women's ovaries? I mean, in the face of all of the women around the world driving and having babies, <laughs> you know, it's like illogical. It doesn't really even compute. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Hu Yen, I'm going to give you the last word. Anything about the women issue? Yeah, I I think that's the difference in culture. Yeah. And, uh, even though they are trying to, I mean, people in uh, Saudi Arabia 
-hmm. they are trying to you know get better with the situation but I think it needs time because I, I myself believe that when it comes to religion people are really uh, conservative yeah usually yes yeah 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 so it takes time so people you know that's definitely how it seems to be working there are religious people who have beliefs and then and then in other people they don't have the same beliefs so they might be changing their minds more quickly but the people who continue to believe certain things have more traditions uh, could take a lot more time to have that realization that driving doesn't affect your ovaries for example so <laughs> Yeah, they might really believe something like that. Okay, well, um, thank you for coming and reading, and um, I enjoyed uh, the conversation. I am teaching the next hour, and it's going to be a very light conversation class. We're going to be talking about movies. I did provide a link uh, to a website. We're going to look at just what's new and, you know, just kind of having fun talking about movies and what we like and what we don't like and what we've seen and what we want to see, that type of thing. So if you want to practice uh, just having a conversation in English, and you can join me. Otherwise, I'll see you another time. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Bye. 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 Yeah. Bye. Thanks, Yuki. Yes. See you okay. by, now. by now. Okay. Bye. Officials have spoken spoken out against. Mm -hmm. So the women are braving a ban. So those are two. That kind of goes together as a phrase. They're braving a ban. To brave something means you're going to do it even if it's dangerous. Um, sometimes we use the word uh, brave like we're going to brave the weather. So it means we're going to get in our cars and drive somewhere. Maybe we're, we want to go to a show or something even if it's supposed to be snowing or raining heavily we're gonna brave it it means we're gonna challenging yeah we're gonna just do it anyways even though it might be a little bit dangerous so that's what they're going to be bear be brave you know when you are brave that means you do something even if you're a little bit afraid or if it's something scary or dangerous even and the ban is um, what is in place right now so when you ban something you you um, you make it against the law so that people are not allowed to do it. So there is a ban right now for women. They cannot drive. So they're braving a ban. They're going against the ban. They're going to do it in anyways. Um, so they're taking to the streets. So this phrasal verb here, to take to something, to take to the streets, that's actually a expression that we use, that whole thing. Is ju it just means to go out in the streets, to go to the streets. Um, we, we use this uh, kind of phrase a lot when there are protests or strikes, like we talked about in yesterday's classes, when people take to the streets. It just means they go there. They go in the streets or out on the streets. And they're doing that because they want to attain um, a driver's license. They want to be able to have. So to, to attain means to be able to get, to be able to have. Um, and there are many people in the country that are have signed a petition so that's you guys probably know what a petition is when there's a protest and especially um, these days it's very easy to pass around a petition online maybe you get a link to a website and then you put your name saying that you support what is happening so there's lots of people out there supporting these women but the government Hi everybody, this is Lisa and it's time for another Verbling class. Um, in this hour we are going to have an English reading class and if you looked at the topic above it's about uh, Saudi Arabian women who had a protest today called a drive-in and they did this to protest the law in Saudi Arabia that doesn't allow them to drive a car. So I just found this on the National Public Radio here in the United States. NPR.org is a website uh, that offers news and all kinds of other programming. And so I found that article, and you can click on the link uh, to the right, to my right, in the verb link chat, and that'll open up the Google document where I put the article. 
And then as um, soon as we have some more students show up, we will put it in the screen share, and then we can read it together and discuss. Hi, Raphael. How are you? Hi, Great. Thank you. What about you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> what's the weather like in Brazil today? Uh, it's it's a it's a nice weather here and the yeah. sky is there's no clouds in the sky. There is a it's a good weather today. Mm-hmm. I have a student in uh, Brazil that I spoke to him it was the morning time for me, but it was uh, about the afternoon for him and it was already <clears throat> eighty one degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is about twenty seven degrees. Celsius and it was clear blue skies and really nice weather in Sao Paulo. So, well, yeah. these days, this hay, these days will be hot in here. It's so hot, uh, yeah. almost forty degrees um, wow. yesterday and the day after. Yes, it was a tough, you know, and it's in spring and it's spring already. So when yeah. it gets summer, it maybe it could be worse. Wow. Now, yes. Are you in uh, Rio? Is that where you yes. are? Okay. Yes, I'm real. Until uh. May. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Wow. All right. Well, you can uh, have some fun on Verbling in those long, dark nights <laughs> of winter. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, um, I was looking around for something interesting to read today for the class, and I found this article on the NPR uh, website, <clears throat> which I thought was um, pretty interesting. I just think I... I didn't provide the link uh, in this uh, at the end, but it's it's the link to the actual website is provided on the Verbling website underneath the video. So if you want to go to the actual website, but um, interestingly, um, I I didn't know this. I guess um, in Saudi Arabia, I guess women are not allowed to drive. Uh, um, I, I saw yeah. this news today in CNN. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. Yes. 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 Oh, cool. Yeah, I haven't watched any news reports, so maybe they have been reporting on it um, on the TV. But I saw yeah, this yeah. on the website, and um, I thought it was rather interesting. Um, and we could practice reading it, and then I think we'll have enough time to talk about it um, and uh, whether or not how we would like it if we couldn't drive. That would be uh, very different for me because in the United States, uh, you have to drive a lot usually if you unless you live in a big city like New York where you can live with and you know you don't need a car you can walk everywhere or take the subway in most places in the United States it's very um, uh, necessary to have a car and to know how to drive and to be able to drive and I, I don't even think guys would want to drive women around here. <laughs> I think that they, they just everybody wants to have their own car and do their own driving. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So okay, let's see, read about what's happening uh, in Saudi Arabia. All right. So you guys know how this works. I'll read the a little bit at a time, and then we'll take turns reading and talk about the vocabulary. Saudi women get behind wheel for drive-in protest. All right, so usually in the United States, uh, in English, we would think of drive-in um, with the words um, drive-in movie. So I don't know if you guys know what that is, where people drive their cars to like a big parking lot type area, and there's a big, huge screen. Um, those were very popular uh, maybe 50, 50 years ago now. There are still some left around the country, but not very many but that was popular so that was kind of what what we would think of as a drive-in but here of course they're talk actually talking about a drive-in um, in the 1960s when there were a lot of protests there used to be sit-ins where students would go to um, buildings at the university and they would sit down and they wouldn't move and that's called a sit-in but in this case it's a drive-in because the women are actually protesting um, against a law that doesn't allow them to drive. So they're driving, doing the thing they are not supposed to be doing. Okay, let's see. Did somebody join us? Oh, yes. Hi. Hi, Nian. Nian. Okay. Good. Just. Hi there. We're just getting started, Nian. Okay, so women in Saudi Arabia are braving a ban on their ability to drive, taking to the streets Saturday as part of a push to allow women to attain driver's licenses. 
thousands of people have signed an online petition supporting the protest, which government and religious officials have spoken out against. Okay, I'm going to start with Yuki this time. I always begin with Aisha. <laughs> Yuki, why don't you start today? <laughs> we'll give uh, Aisha uh, a break. From me? From yes. Me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uman, <clears throat> um, Uman in Saudi, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. Women in, in Saudi Arabia are braving a ban on the ability to drive, taking taking to the street Saturday as part of a uh, part of a push to allow women to attain driver driver's licenses. Thousands of people have signed an online petition sub, petition supporting the protest, which government and religion. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Uh, we I was talking to him today about Rio. He has a sister who lives in Rio, uh, and we were talking about the you know the favelas and and different things. He was explaining to me, so it's interesting. Yes, yes. great. Well, welcome to class again, and hi, Aisha. Welcome to you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. So did you guys, oh look, lots of people opened up the article already, but only two have joined us in class. So um, we can just um, get started. Aisha, uh, I was talking to Rafael and he says in Brazil it's um, pretty warm and getting hotter, so maybe we should head down to Brazil because it's getting cold where I live. <laughs> and I know it's getting cold where you live. <laughs> let's go, let's go. <laughs> let's go. I can give verbling classes from Brazil. <laughs> and I could be near the beach. Yes, uh, that's why you see me wearing my jacket here because uh, I was outside all day at soccer games for my kids and it got um, the clouds came in and it was, you know, it's chilly. So. I'm still a little chilly. Oh. And Yuki, how are you doing? Hello. Hi. Uh, fine, thank you. We are just talking Hi, a little bit before class starts. Yuki, um, yes. is it getting, getting pretty cold in Moscow? Are you wearing your coats and hats and things already? Uh, it's getting colder, colder now. But, yeah. but uh, uh, fortunately, it, uh, it, it, it isn't uh, uh, snow. No, it, it, snow. It, not, it, it doesn't snow. It yeah. doesn't snow. In Moscow, um, I think of Moscow as a very cold place with lots of snow. When does it usually start to snow? Will it snow in November or December? Uh, usually, uh, in the beginning of November, uh, um, it 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 snows. It okay. snows. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, and uh, and long winter continues. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dark, um, long winter. 